I said, next time you come, I want you to come and talk about your process that you're going through to, mm-hmm. to have a baby. And I yes. thought it was important because I know there are women out there yeah. and men uh, with women who want to have children and are going through a similar process. And I want to thank you, first of all, for your transparency. No pro- mm-hmm. I mean, I thought, I mean, if those of you who follow me on Twitter know I've been tweeting about this process for, what, now over a year and a yeah. half yeah. Um, with my Black and IVF hashtag talking about going through this process, um, only because, you know, there are so many women going through the process, and I knew there were people going through it and not talking about it. Um, but then as I started talking about it, the amount of people that are in my DMs or sending emails and be like, girl, I'm going to do the same thing. I I don't talk about it publicly, but this. And I'm like, right. but we got to because like everybody is suffering and going through these uh, processes and it creates this barrier, this um, of uneducation. Right. And then you have to learn all because nobody taught you. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's bad enough as black women that we're not treated as uh, equally right. by the mm-hmm. medical sy- right. system that when we don't talk and share, um, it yeah. puts us at a disadvantage. So let me also shout out Michelle Obama, who in her book mm-hmm. Becoming talked about the process of going through IBF. As well. So that, I think, let it, well, the first lady's talking about right. it, and then right. it's all right. I, mm-hmm. I, I was so glad to like hear, and I've listened to the book, and um, I own it, a hard copy, but also listen to it. And so then also her opening up and talking about it. Um, the more people talk about it, the more information can be shared um, in terms of process, what best doctors, what best, you know, pro- like the more. And it's not just the IVF process. It's just miscarrying or not being able to have children mm. or having difficulty in general. Just to flash back, if you think about it, what was the first conversations you had about your fertility? Mm. Right. Um, you have your period and some people have great relation, you know, um, thing about like they got celebrated and all that kind of stuff. And other people, it was like this contentious shame that you, mm. you know, had your cycle. Right. But then think about the conversation about your fertility. I know the first conversation I had was don't you be out in them streets having no right. babies. Right. Right. So not even a conversation right. about how the babies happen. No, once you're out, don't in the bring no babies in no. this house. Don't bring no and then they home. lie to you about how it could happen. No, nope, yep. If you kiss, mm-hmm. you know. So now right. you're walking around and then like, you am I pregnant? Like, well, it ain't happened. So what else is they not right. telling me? Right. So about? your first conversation is about don't do it. Yeah. Right. Or and then if you do, like when you get pregnant, you're gonna have you know that you believe, oh, I get married and I have sex and then I have a and then I'm pregnant and I have a baby. No one ever says that may not help happen right. <laughs> that way right. that quickly or you may have trouble. So I remember um so back when I was previously married, I married and okay, let's have a baby and got uh pregnant, but then I miscarried. Um not once but twice. Mm. And I remember just like this shock and shame and, you know, mad at Jesus, mad at God, you know, like all this other kind of stuff. And but I also remember black women, um, some who were much older, Mm -hmm. coming to me and being able to quote dates. Mm -hmm. They were coming to me and they said, 1972, so and so and so like that they had experienced miscarriage. Um, And never like that is not a common conversation that Mm. you may not just have sex and get pregnant. (laughs) Like there may be trouble. There may be issues that and things or whatever that you have to endure. Right. And the fact that these older black women were coming to me and quoting dates was also um, a a notion to me that there is trauma associated with that. There's the shame that Mm. I shouldn't talk about it. But it actually helps me like to be able to say, oh, I'm not Not alone. alone. Like there's not something wrong with me. There is is a pro uh, issue and I should you know address it my mm. mom had five miscarriages after me so wow. I joked that I was trying to pull everything everything <laughs> on the way out I'm like, ain't nothing else coming through here and my mom too my yeah. mom had several miscarriages before I was born mm. my grandmother and who's uh, I talk about all the time who's 93 had several um, miscarriages and during her time the prognosis was oh if you have this many or whatever we'll just do a hysterectomy you know yes, like, and that's what we'll happened. just do right. a hysterectomy right, right. right? Yeah. Um, and so she ended up adopting children mm. right there are all of these conversations about it but it's hush very. And particularly for what we, we're seeing now, like there's this um, uh, public conversation about black women's fertility um, and 
also just being able to be safe and healthy delivering babies into this world in general, those kind of conversations need to happen. So that was the reason why I talked very openly about suffering through the miscarriages. Um, I talk very openly now about us going through the process of IVF for an attempt for us to have our own child.